Prince Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. I want to talk to you today about the embarrassment of faith. Somebody listening to me today has received a promise from God with instructions to start a unique and powerful ministry. As a matter of fact, the revelation to you is so big, you're questioning as to whether it is really from God. You also are concerned as to what other people, even God's people, will think of you if you obey God in this matter. My friend, if you want to be greatly used by God, you will always have to, each time, be willing to make a step or make a move of faith. It will not be just walking out on a limb of a tree by faith and then sawing off the limb. However, it will be sawing the limb off first and then walking out by faith. Noah saw the limb off when he started building the ark. The Bible tells us in the Torah in Genesis chapter 6, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Notice that Noah obeyed God in all the things in which he was instructed by God. There's a reason God gives us instructions in detail. Your job, my job, is to listen to God. We must be in the Word of God every day starting our day in prayer, starting our day with the Word, listening to God. How can we obey God if we don't first listen to God? We listen to Him in His Word, and we listen to Him by His Holy Spirit speaking to us through His Word, through providential circumstances, possibly through others, but speaking to our hearts and confirmed by the Word of God. There is a reason God gives us instructions in detail. However, sometimes he may give us at first general or non-specific leading, and later when we arrive at the place for new instructions, he will be more specific. Why should God give all the plans out in detail when we haven't even taken the first step and started to carry out his instructions? Notice that the great leaders and deliverers which God used to impact and save humanity were required to do what seemed foolish in the eyes of the world. Noah started by building the ark, and he and his family were probably laughed at and scorned for 120 years. What he did probably seemed crazy in the eyes of the community. Abraham left his father's wealth and the false gods and idols of his people to follow the true God that his relatives and friends could not see. He started by heading out to a place he had never seen, and he didn't know where it was. It was a place that God said he would show to Abraham. Now Jehovah said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred or family and thy father's house, unto the land that I will show you. You can read that in the Torah in Genesis chapter 12. Concerning what has God been speaking to you, my friend? Whatever it is, you may have to be willing to accommodate the embarrassment of faith. That is, you may have to adapt to or fit in with self-consciousness, uncomfortableness, and uneasiness. You may have people look down upon you with pity and shame. If you don't allow yourself to walk in the Spirit, you may even feel awkward, especially if you allow yourself to objectively look at the situation in the natural. During Abraham's walk of faith, after he started, at one point God promised to give him a son, and then descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. The Bible tells us in the Brit Hadashah, or the Hebrew New Covenant, who against hope, Abraham believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken by God, so shall your descendants be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Abraham was one hundred, and Sarah was ninety when Isaac was born. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised him, he was able also to perform. Read these different accounts of Abraham and build your faith through studying his life. Read Romans chapter 4 and read Galatians and read the book of Genesis in the Torah. Let your spirit be vitalized by faith so you can move out like these people of God moved out. What has God promised you, my friend? What step or move has God required of you? What is the embarrassment of faith that you may probably encounter? I have a word for you from God. 
After you start in this faith endeavor, which God has promised to perform, you will not care what people think about you. You will be so overwhelmed with joy and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you're oblivious to what people, even God's people, think or say about you. If God is going to do the work through you by His grace, it is going to have to be by your faith. You will have to believe and start. Take the action. Make the move. If you really believe God can and will do what he has told you, then be willing to encounter the embarrassment of faith. God told Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations, before whom Abraham believed, even God, who makes alive the dead and calls those saints which be not as though they were already. You can read that in the Brit Hadashah in Romans 4, chapter 17. If you are involved in a project or endeavor where others have joined you, God will be good at times to give you encouragement, even faith leading through them. Do not discount the advice of others who are with you in the faith project that the Lord has assigned you. The only time you should not listen is when you definitely know what God wants you to do at that stage of the game and other advice is conflicting. This requires you to follow your spirit, the voice of your inner man, your heart, If you do not know it is God, then don't do it. I promised God at a particular juncture in my life and ministry that I would never do anything that I was not sure he wanted me to do. Study the teachings in the archives of the Apostles Group or other of my podcast in the series Direction and Guidance or also in the series Follow Your Heart. I'll put links for those in the show notes of this podcast. I just yesterday prayed for a lady to conceive. When I prayed, the power of God came upon me. There was no doubt the anointing of the Spirit was so strong upon me that I could feel it in my arms. His presence was so intense. I have prayed for several barren women to conceive who conceived in 30 days. God knows how to fulfill His promises without our help. We just need to use our faith. Abraham's wife Sarah, after many years of being barren, suggested to Abraham that he lay with her maidservant Hagar, and that way they could have a child. In other words, she thought they could help God keep his word or promise to Abraham. God does not need help in keeping his word. If he promised you something, my friend, then you just do what he told you to do. Obey him in faith. However, notice something. About 14 years later, it was Sarah's faith that helped bring about the miracle of conception of Isaac. The Bible tells us that through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed at the age of 90 and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, of him, Abraham, age 100, as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Read also in the Brit Hadashah, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. In Hebrews 11:11, 11, 11, when the scripture says, through faith also Sarah herself, the Greek word for herself implies something remarkable that Sarah would manifest this faith. She had laughed years before at even the suggestion by Abraham of God's promise through a divine visitation. You can read that in the Torah in Genesis chapter 18. But now, years later, she had grown in her trust in God, probably through living with Abraham. Abraham was now about 100, Sarah was around 90. Read Genesis chapter 17 and 18. Even though Sarah influenced Abraham to make a bad decision 14 years earlier to try to help God in the flesh, with the subsequent birth of Ishmael, she later through faith was the instrument God used to bring about the promise of the child Isaac. And with the result of not only millions of descendants of Abraham, but the establishment of the seed line through which Mashiach Yeshua, Messiah Jesus, would come to earth through a miracle virgin birth over 2,000 years later. My friend, your obedience to God's promise, initiated, implemented through your start, your step of faith and subsequent walk, even though making you an exhibition to the world and the resulting embarrassment of faith will result in the promise of God being performed to bless you, your descendants, and the nations of the world. Die to the embarrassment of faith, my friend. Bring resurrection life to you, your family, your associates, and the world. Many will join you later and thank you for both the privilege of working with you and being under your leadership. 
This has been your friend, Prince Hanley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. Baruch Abba, Bashim Adonai.